Welcome to Health Matters, a podcast presented by Wellmark, Blue Cross, and Blue Shield, where we invite Wellmark experts to discuss healthcare and health insurance topics that matter most. I'm your host, Kareem Amiri. Hello, everyone. Today, I have some special guests with me. Uh, I have my leader, Dean Jilks, Director of Group Sales and Retention, and Nick Waters, Segment Manager from the Segment Performance and Market Insights team for Wellmark. Dean, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, uh, I am the Director of Large Group Sales and Account Retention uh, here in Iowa. So what that means is uh, I lead and serve uh, a team of service reps and account managers uh, who service, who are assigned uh, to all our groups uh, with more than 101 uh, members enrolled. You know, this team is really uh, responsible for understanding our group's needs and wants, helping them understand uh, what we have to offer uh, to help improve their plan and their business. And I think thirdly, uh, to advocate on their behalf and bring the resources to bear uh, that we have internally uh, to help them with their decision making as they design their health plans. You know, we have a, a, a tremendous number of subject matter experts internally, be it clinicians on the medical side, pharmacists uh, that were, you know, once practicing pharmacists, they all have PharmDs. You know, we have legal expertise in how to build, how to build plans. Uh, obviously, we have actuarial and underwriting expertise on the financial side, and so really, our team is is designed to be the quarterback and bring the resources to bear uh, that that a group needs to run an effective plan. Yep, and I can attest, I work with all those resources every day. <laughs> yes, you do, Nick. How about yourself? Yeah, thanks, Kareem. So I'm the segment performance manager for large group and key account segment. So my team and I, we look primarily at trying to understand what's happening, not only in the Iowa and South Dakota markets, um, which is validated by obviously Kareem by you and and Dean and your teams, uh, but then understand what's happening nationally from a competitive standpoint uh, and make sure we can uh, do the best job partnering with our other blue partners across the country uh, to uh, make sure that we have the right investments in the products and services uh, that our clients and our members are looking for. Yep, I know our teams greatly appreciate what you do and and getting that uh, intelligence for us. You bet. Uh, they've both been invited here today uh, to join me to talk about what we're hearing for top trends and priorities for large group employers in 2024. So to help set stage for our, our listeners today, um, Annually at Wellmark, we like to survey our sales team to ask what trends and priorities they're hearing from their large group employer clients as we head into the new year. Um, Nick and the segment team, they do a great job of conducting the survey in October of each year. Um, And then we like to compare those results with what we hear at a national level. Um, This information comes from the business group on health. And for those listeners unfamiliar with this organization, they are a global organization serving as an advocate for large employers and healthcare policy. Uh, The organization is comprised of a network of large group employers covering the lives of 60 million workers spanning over 200 countries. And I know personally in in my role, um, I really appreciate um, that we're, you know, not being static and trying to evolve each year by ensuring the products, services, and initiatives we have resonate um, with you know, the market needs and the needs of our customers and, and our members. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's dig into the results. Uh, if you both agree with me, how about we start at the national level and then drill down to the specific priorities of our of our Walmart groups? Sounds good. That sounds great. Awesome. Dean, do you want to kick yeah, us off? Yeah. Um, you know, I I think it's it's really important and essential that we know what's going on nationally. Uh, and the business group on health is is very helpful for us because two things. We see either alignment with what we see in the report when we talk to our own large group clients, you know, anything over 100. And the larger we get, the more alignment we get with the with the survey results. Um, and also it it also gives us a little bit of insight on what's to come. Typically, we see things happening out on the coast 
that uh, that occur before they get to the Midwest. So it's a little bit of a leading indicator for us. Um, but you know, no big surprises in the 2024 results nationwide. We're seeing concern about affordability and total cost of care, um, the growth of of health plan cost in general, or what we might call trend. Um, you know, when folks are concerned about cost, they're really, really focused on pharmacy. Um, yep, and we can, can talk concur. about that. Great. <laughs> and we can talk about that more. Um, mental health is a big concern. I think nationwide. I don't think that's there's a, there's any regionality to any of that. Folks are worried about cancer and other large claims. Um, so a lot of alignment, and again, insight for us uh, when we look at the studies nationally. Yeah, I mean, and Dean, I agree. And this is the one, this is the one area uh, where what we're hearing from our groups um, aligns with everything we're seeing uh, nationally. And so, you mentioned mental and behavioral health. That certainly uh, is one that we're hearing a lot about, and where groups are looking for uh, for different options. So, again, all of this uh, is identical to what we're hearing from our groups, and so so that's good because. Um, we're able to tackle that with uh, not only here in Iowa and South Dakota, but with our, our partners, our blue partners nationally. Yep. Yeah. And I, I agreed. Not many great surprises there. Um, but how about if we want to, you know, dive into, um, into some of these specific ones and, and, you know, you can both weigh with your, your own perspectives and, you know, what do we start with, uh, with mental health? I mean, I know I've seen statistics in the past, you know, Iowa's actually pretty, pretty good compared to other states. But when you think about the penetration and, and what's available as, as um, you know, it's like mental health professionals, there's only like 34% <laughs> for the need that are available. So we're at the top, but that's still pretty low. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And, you know, Kareem, you've even had um, Dr. Matt Stanley, uh, Wellmark Senior Medical Director of Behavioral Health, uh, here on one of our recent podcasts. Um, and dedicated an entire episode uh, to this topic already, um, because it's such a, a crucial part of not only the overall well-being uh, of those we serve, but a key component and driver of healthcare and, and healthcare costs. So, what we're seeing here specifically, uh, two concerns: access, and then navigation. How do you move about uh, those products and services? So, it is critical uh, with mental and behavioral health to ensure that. Um, members have the right care at the right time in the setting of their choosing, wherever they feel uh, uh, most most comfortable. And it has to be able to span uh, the spectrum of severity. So from uh, very basic coaching um, to, to help folks through day to day to high severity conditions. So uh, it's important that we have uh, access available. Um, Kareem, you actually mentioned it as far as uh, the ch- one of the challenges with access are the lack uh, of providers uh, in this space. Um, so that's that is another part of it. So what can we do uh, from a from a virtual standpoint if if we don't have or if we can kind of spread some of those resources nationally that we may not have here in Iowa, and South Dakota? It still gives an outlet um, to our members that way. Uh, and then the other piece is navigation. So there are so many options that are available today. Not only uh, from Wellmark, but from from providers, you know, you go, we go in and, and see any of our providers, and they talk about their virtual portals that they have and and how they can help. So, um, it really comes down to how we as as carriers can do uh, the best job of driving members to a central hub and make it easy to understand um, what's available, um, especially in that in that emergent time when they when they need a, a quick result. Um, what is it that we can provide to them? Um, and then how can we work together with the providers to talk about where some of those services overlap? So a ton of opportunity there. Yeah, it's a, it's a confusing system for the member. Um, and they're frustrated by it. And, you know, in a time of need, uh, access to care is usually pretty darn urgent. And I think, you know, I think most folks think that they have to get to a a clinician that can write them a script. Um, But that, in fact, isn't always the case. Um, Sometimes, you know, a a, a good counselor, just talking to a good counselor, um, could be just as beneficial 
and that's where you know it kind of kind of piggyback on Nick's comment right right provider right service at the right time in the right place um, and bringing uh, bringing resources to help our membership figure that out um, you know I know internally we are making uh, great investments in this area adding clinicians um, both prescribing and non-prescribing to our own staff and partnering with these external sources uh, where folks can get service be it virtual or in in person um, and again helping direct them to the right care at the right time so um, a lot of work to be done no doubt about it there is a shortage it's national um, it's not going to be fixed anytime soon uh, it's more of a generational problem um, but there are solutions out there you know employers need to really need to need to send their folks to our team and and let us help guide them yeah, and I appreciate that. I mean, you know, as a leader and working with our account teams and working with our employers, uh, this definitely has noted and it, it's a top trend. Mm-hmm. It's uh, a main focal point for, for many of our employers and, you know, will continue to evolve. As you said, it's not an overnight uh, solution, but there are solutions out there and we'll, we'll continue to bring those to our employers. Yeah, for sure. We're committed. You know, we want to move on to another hot topic. And, you know, we mentioned at the beginning, pharmacy costs, mm-hmm. uh, Dean, I know that you've been working a lot on that mm. recently. <laughs> uh, you want to start us off on that one? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, again, if you if you talk to or, or you look at the, the business group on health, they'll tell you 92% of employers are concerned about uh, the growth in uh, pharmacy spend. I would say it's probably greater than that. I think everyone is concerned about it. You know, I remember when pharmacy represented 15% of total a combined medical and pharmacy spend today, we're looking at 25 and the highest growth rate uh, of all. So um, I understand why employers uh, are alarmed. Um, there's a lot going on there. Um, and, you know, really a lot of the growth comes from the, the higher end spend, uh, the specialty drugs. Um, folks are concerned about these new gene therapies and cellular therapies and while those may not be available over the counter at the pharmacy, it's still drug spend. It's still things that um, employers are concerned about. You know, our approach to that is is really a holistic one. With Wellmark's focus on total cost of care, there might be an advantage to some pharmacy spend if there is a greater offset on medical. So we look at things holistically that way. And we would say some growth in pharmacy is okay if there's that offset on the medical side. Um, also, when you when you get into dissecting the actual pharmacy spend, uh, there's a lot of different levels. There's there's what you pay at the you know at the counter and what the plan pays, and then there's the real net cost behind the scenes because all these pharmacy manufacturers provide rebates, and it's it's complicated for the employer to figure out where the lowest net cost of spend is. And that's where we spend our efforts. You know, we, we may not have a drug with the highest rebate on our formulary because it has the highest rebate if it has a higher total net cost. And we manage that um, very closely. Uh, and we think it's the right way to approach the business. We also think that, again, integrating with medical you can, you can prevent duplicative services. Drugs can be delivered medically. The same drugs can be delivered over the counter. We want to make sure that there isn't duplication there. Uh, so we manage that. Um, and there are a lot of new strategies. These biological drugs, they're very expensive. Humira. Um, Humira. <laughs> um, by, just by nature of how they're, they're manufactured. They're, you know, they're large molecules. Um, that each batch is is different, by the way. Yep. Um, and now, similar to when generics came on the scene, we have what's called biosimilars. So we have manufacturers competing in the biological uh, arena um, with non-brand named drugs, and they're actually quite cost effective. Um, at the counter, it could be less than half. Uh, of the name brand product. Um, Wellmark went so far as uh, effective January 1st to take one of those brand name 
uh, biologicals off our pharmacy. Uh, that caused a little bit of disruption for our membership. Um, they had to get new scripts. Um, but in the end, it's going to save uh, the members and the plans a significant amount of money because this, this biosimilar, again, same molecule, manufactured the same way, right alongside a name brand, uh, name brand biological, um, and significantly, significantly lower cost. Yep. Yeah, I think um, net, net savings yeah. of $2,000 after rebates with the... Uh, yeah, and significantly brand. lower rebates. So again, just another example of how, you know, some folks can really get focused on rebates and thinking that that's what drives net cost when in fact, sometimes that is the case. And where that is the case, we, we may put that drug on our, on our formulary if it's the most, uh, the most efficient drug to, to deal with the, uh, with the diagnosis. But um, if, if it's a tie, we're going to take the lower net cost each time, and, and that's what we did. And it, recently. This is a great promo because we will have a, our next <laughs> next conversation that I'm going to have is on the biosimilar strategy, and we'll get definitely into more detail about yeah, that. Yeah. And, um, really excited about what we're doing in that space and really to meet the demand and, and that we see in the market and for our employers. Yeah. And so, uh, Dean, what, what you're, you're sharing, what we're seeing uh, both nationally and locally, what we saw within our, within our survey that was completed right at the end of last year was exactly what, you're, what you were talking about. So especially for those, for those drugs that don't have um, uh, the, the biosimilar option, they know that employers know that there are going to be some high costs that are going to come through. So their, their request or their question uh, to us is, so help me manage that. Help me anticipate that. How, you know, uh, let me see some of the reporting that's available to talk about some of the trends that's happening within um, a, a specific a specific group's population and, and what they can do to, to help under, better understand what options uh, are, are available. And I think that's the one thing that kind of has come through um, very clearly here was uh, was them telling us or coming to us and saying, hey, give us your perspective on this. What is it, you know, Wellmark, that you were looking uh, for? What is it with everything that you see across uh, Iowa and South Dakota? What's what's best practice based on the individual challenge that my company uh, is dealing with? Awesome. You know, I want to switch switch gears here and, and um, touch on one of the last, you know, this last focus that we that we mentioned at the beginning and that's the evaluation of partnerships and, and vendors. And I think a lot of, for a lot of people that might come out, it would be like a point solution, mm-hmm. you know, reviewing what, what those are, how effective they can be, how do we work with them? Um, Nick, do you want to kick us off on that conversation? Yeah, Kareem, what, what we've seen, and this has been pretty consistent here, uh, certainly the last three or four years, uh, it's been condition specific or condition focused. Uh, certainly. So what we have been seeing pretty regularly, um, looking for different vendors around uh, musculoskeletal conditions, um, behavioral and mental health, uh, to no surprises, is one that continues to, to come up. Uh, chronic kidney disease, uh, end stage renal disease, that's, a, that's another big one. And then more recently, and, and we mentioned it here at the, at the beginning of the conversation, was uh, around cancer care. So what options are available um, certainly going through the, the pandemic, there was obviously uh, some delayed care. And so as some of these um, delayed diagnoses come up, uh, certainly cancer care options are something that our groups are, are have been asking about um, in, in our day-to-day conversations. Dean, do you have anything nationally you want to add to that? or? Yeah, I mean, I, I think both nationally and locally, um, you know, there was a, there was a, there's a lot of there's a lot of hope out there that some of these solutions can can bend the cost curve, right? And lots of folks jumped in there. Um, we see nationally that some of the largest employers are slowing down on this front a little bit, taking some time to measure uh, the solutions that they in fact put in place, looking really hard to see if there is financial ROI. Um, you know, as the economy slows down and business gets a little tougher out there. Uh, the healthcare dollar uh, is even more precious, um, and so folks want to make sure that they're making really good investments uh, in their in their employees' health and not wasting the healthcare dollar. Um, so we see a lot of pressure for ROI um, and a lot of scrutiny for existing programs, and a lot of scrutiny before somebody 
opts into additional cost to put new programs in place. Uh, and that's, you know, that makes good business sense. Uh, we understand that, uh, you know, we approach the business the same way. Um, again, <laughs> I might sound like a broken record, but, you know, it everything we do really should have some positive impact. And by positive, I mean a decrement to total cost of care uh, or certainly expect to um, slow the trend curve. So um, this is happening nationally. Uh, we've talked to uh, our consultant partners who have national footprints. They're asking the same questions. Um, so lots of skepticism out there. Um, not that there isn't still hope and not that there aren't solutions that can be impactful. There are. Um, but folks are, folks are going to take it slow. Yep. And very methodical. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And that's what I, I've, I've heard. And I know we are coming out with a few new solutions that folks will get to hear about here soon. Uh, Fern being one of them and our own uh, chronic kidney disease and stage renal disease uh, solution that we'll be offering. So looking forward to hearing about more about those. Mm-hmm. Well, our time is up for today. Um, I want to thank both of you for coming in and and sharing your thoughts on our national and and Walmart's perspective for 2024 and our large group employer trends and priorities. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So if you want to continue the conversation about today's topic, please reach out to your Walmart representative. And thank you for tuning in to Health Matters, a podcast presented by Walmart, Blue Cross, and Blue Shield. Take care. This podcast is brought to you by Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Iowa and South Dakota. Wellmark Blue Cross and Blue Shield is an independent licensee of the Blue Cross and Blue Shield Association. To learn more about Wellmark, visit www.wellmark.com.